This is Frank at Sakria, and uh, this is supposed to be the third of four videos, but this is going to be the third of five videos on the election. This one's going to be about the U.S. House. Just made no sense to put a House and Senate video all in one. And let's face it, I'm not really great at doing five minutes, but I'll try to get this done in eight. Like and subscribe below, and uh, this is my prediction on the House and uh, some waves that may be out there, or Redwall. Uh, that you may want to look at. So like and subscribe. Now it takes uh, 218 of 3, uh, it's going to be 435 to get your majority. And uh, Republicans right now would have to lose 23 seats to lose their majority. Um, I went to Real Clear Politics and they put 119 uh, Republicans as being safe, likely, or lean, and 204 on the Democrats being safe, likely, and lean. I looked at the likelies and leans and said, are there anything there? that they have wrong. On the Republican side, they look at two pickups. One is Pennsylvania, uh, Pennsylvania 14. Now remember, Pennsylvania redistricted all of their seats. And um, because of that, yeah, 14 will probably go Republican plus one. But on the other end, five and eight are likely to go Democrat. And they put uh, Pennsylvania seven also in the lean category. I don't have an issue with any of those. The other one is Minnesota, and I'll get to that one a little bit, uh, a little bit uh, later. Minnesota 8. So um, on the other races there, um, I didn't have any other issues with what they put as likely Democrat besides the Minnesotas. So uh, on Democratic side, you're looking at plus 12, Republican plus 2. So that is 13 or more races that Democrats would need to pick up the House. So I'm going to start with Minnesota because that's either going to be the blue wall or... A, uh, or it's going to be Red Wall or Blue Wave. Um, Minnesota has eight congressional uh, districts. Um, the three that are around Minneapolis, which are Minneapolis to the east and north, those are going to be likely who they are. It's the five that are on the south end all the way up. So if you take the state, everything in the middle is kind of decided except for Minneapolis itself. And then around, it's where all the questions happen. Minnesota 8, which is blue right now, they have as being uh, red. The three that west, uh, south, and Minneapolis, they have as now as blue. And on the border with Iowa, they have as undecided. Where I think the Ellison mistake is happening is going to be Minnesota, and that's where your waiver wall is going to come from. Ellison is the attorney general candidate. He uh, beat up his girlfriend, allegedly. He's still the attorney general candidate. Um, is the bad press, which is finally starting to hit, um, uh, this former national democratic leader going to be enough to kill Ellison's chance of election? Probably. Will it hurt the governor's ticket or either of the Senate race tickets? There's two because of uh, Al Franken resigning in disgrace. Uh, no, probably not. But is it enough to f switch some of these congressional races? Yes. Um, I think you'll, if now if the Democrats hold four of these five or get four of these five, um, then you will see that there's a blue wave. If the Republicans get four of these five, there's definitely a wall, partly because the media market that is in that southern area also includes Iowa. I'll get into Iowa later. Um, but if it's a 3-2 split one way or the other, eh, it's going to be go down to where I think my prediction is going to happen. Fading over to Iowa, I right now is 3-1 to one Republican, and I think it's going to go 3-1 to one Democrat. The only one that's going to hold is that north eastern, or excuse me, northwestern portion. Um, the uh, southeastern portion, I believe, will switch to the Ds, and that's a bad sign for Republicans in 2020 with the presidential ticket. They need as many Republicans in Iowa as they can get. Now, um, Florida, I'll talk more about uh, in the Florida-centric video, uh, but the only one that they have undecided that, that I will talk about is Florida 15. That's a district that basically goes from the edge of Tampa uh, around Orlando, but doesn't actually go to Orlando proper, sort of the Disney properties. Ross Spano is the Republican. Christine uh, Carlson is the Democrat. Um, the reason why I think they put it as undecided is because of Puerto Rican vote, especially those that came over from Maria. Um, highly unlikely that those Puerto Ricans are going to break one way or the other. It looks like they're about a 50-50 split. These are not like the New Ricans or the Florida Ricans who uh, tend to vote Democratic. Their voter registration was basically split between Republican, Democrat, and undecided, or no party. And uh, yeah, that's not gonna be significantly enough to switch it into a Democratic candidate, even if some of those undecideds do lean more Democrat than Republican. Um, elsewhere on the map for political 
presidential history. Uh, Maine, too. Now, Maine does the weird thing where each congressional district uh, gets an electoral vote instead of the state as a whole. And Maine, too, voted for Trump. In that election, uh, you have the incumbent, which is Bruce Pelquin, versus the Democrat, Jared Golden. Um, I do think that Pelquin will lose this seat, but it will be one of those that you're counting votes late late at night. Sorry, uh to my uh, brother's child, uh, it's going to take a while for you to win that Democratic seat. But I ultimately think, Ali, that you are going to get that uh, Marine too. Uh, elsewhere in the country, um, how much of a Democratic flop is Virginia south of, um, of uh, uh, D.C. Arlington? There's two, undis- or two that they have toss-ups. I think Republicans will win neither of them. I do think that they will retain... Uh, the one place in uh, North Carolina. Are there any places that will look good for Republicans? Well, um, actually in Nevada. Now, Nevada, because we don't understand geography, two is up top, then goes four, then goes Vegas, and then goes three. Again, numbering is not one of our keen things. Democrats right now control three of those four seats. Um, and the two that are where I think you could be seeing the wall would be four, which is in the middle, and three, which is on the bottom. Um, Laughlin uh, to Southern Vegas. Uh, I think that probably will be held as a Democrat, but the more Mormon four in the middle looks like it would be Republican, especially without having to have uh, to vote for um, the Bunny Ranch guy for the state uh, Senate. And uh, next door in Utah, uh, Mia Love, who is the only African American Republican female uh, in Congress. Um, I believe she will hold on to the seat. Um, there are some positives. I don't think California will be as blue as it should be, um, even though there is, of course, no Republican on the Senate ticket uh, because of their weird jungle primary. And the Republican governor race, is, governor, governor candidate is pretty bad. Montana, I'll actually get into on uh, uh, when I get to the Senate video. That'll lock in tandem with who I believe will win this Senate. Um, so what are we looking at here? The beginning of the election, uh, 12 months ago, I said Democrats historically win about 25 seats. They will win between 21 and 24 this time. That has not changed. I believe that they will clear the 24 margin, maybe get up as many as 27, but you're not looking at a real wave. Now, yes, Democrats will try to control the House, and I believe Nancy Pelosi will at least temporarily be the speaker. But for those few moderates on the Republican and Democratic side who are looking down the barrel of a re-election in 2020, where, depending on where you are, could be very, very favorable to the president or very, very not favorable to the president, you could be seeing some of those people wanting to flip parties, especially with redistricting coming up, knowing that, okay, maybe you win a quick election now and you survive uh, for 2022. That's why state races are so important. That's why the Georgia governor's race is so important. Uh, that's why, to a lesser extent, the Florida governor's race is so important. And uh, you don't know what's going to happen with redistricting with the new uh, Supreme Court, um, whether it be some revision to Maryland or Wisconsin or something else out there. So like and subscribe. But again, you're talking maybe 220 Democrat, 215 Republican. Yes, technically it's a Democratic majority. That plays out well. Democrats control gavels. That's great if you want to storm into potentially impeaching the president. Wait till I get to the Senate video. Your impeachment's probably not looking so good.